check these guys out. These are not monarch caterpillars, but these are tussock moth caterpillars. And just like the monarch butterfly, these caterpillars rely primarily on milkweed for their diet. And they are voracious. When they first start out, they look a lot like monarch caterpillar first instars, which is just kind of translucent, pale, and a black face. But already, we're starting to see some differences. No stripes, but instead the little hairs are sprouting. These guys are so cool. Hi, I'm Rich Lund, and welcome to the least monarch butterfly episode of Raising Monarchs. What I have here are some adult tussock moths that just came out of Cocoon. And I thought maybe we could talk about them a little bit. If you've been watching this series, you know that me and Latin are tenuous friends at best. But the milkweed tussock moth is... You keep... The milkweed tussock moth is Eucades egli. Sorry. And it's a really cool animal. As the opening part of this video showed you, about a month and a half ago, I found some milkweed tussock moth caterpillars on some milkweed. And it was here at my home. Now when you find them, they're in a huge batch usually. The mom will lay a huge cluster of eggs and for a long time those caterpillars tend to stick together and devour the milkweed plant. I've found them before, but usually it's out there in nature, and when I do, I just leave them be. But since I found these guys on my home territory, I decided I wanted to take them in, feed them milkweed. Why not? I was going out to get milkweed anyway for the monarchs. I could be the custodian of these as well. As caterpillars in their young instars, they start out very clear and an off-white color with little black heads. So it can sometimes, to the untrained eye, be confused for a monarch caterpillar. But that doesn't last too long. They soon start to grow these tufts of little hairs, making them look almost like they've got mohawks, like they are the punk rock of the caterpillar milkweed world. And something pretty awesome about them, too, is that just like the adult monarch butterflies, and just like other devourers of milkweed, like the milkweed beetle or the milkweed bug, it also will use that distinct black and red or orange coloration in order to deter predators. It's pretty interesting, I think, that a lot of these animals they are helping each other out by constantly advertising the black and reddish orange color is something to stay away from. Once the caterpillars have eaten enough and gone through enough instar stages, then they will start to try to make a cocoon. Now this is different than a chrysalis. For butterflies, a chrysalis is something that actually is developed inside the caterpillar and it sheds its skin to reveal the chrysalis, as we've seen the monarch do many times. Butterflies tend to do this, whereas moths tend to make cocoons. A cocoon is different. It's something that's external that the animal makes around itself. Usually it's using its own silk to do this, and it might also pick up other debris or building materials from out in its environment in order to make the cocoon. For a lot of moths, they often will be in cocoon over winter. And I didn't know if that was what was going to happen with my tussock moths. Sometimes they do that. But this time around, they came out before summer's done. As adult moths, though, their coloration isn't nearly as amazing or pronounced. They do have a little bit of an orangish-black color on their abdomen, but beyond that, they're kind of a plain gray. And that's really interesting. You see, just like the other insects that eat milkweed, it builds up those foul-tasting chemicals. But unlike these other insects that we're used to seeing, like the monarch butterfly or the milkweed beetle, these guys are nocturnal. And so having a pronounced coloration wouldn't really serve them any purpose. Since they're out mostly at night, nothing's going to actually see that coloration and be deterred by it. Instead, since it's not birds that are the major predator of this animal, but bats, which have very sensitive hearing, it actually makes a clicking noise to signify, don't eat me, I taste horrible. That's awesome. Now, why did I take these guys in? Why did I decide to raise them? It's actually an issue that sort of does relate to us who normally raise monarchs. I made a pests and predators video which discussed the different types of animals we might see on our milkweeds or possibly trying to cause our monarch caterpillars some harm. And in that video, I brought up the milkweed bug and the milkweed beetle, and I explained how, for the most part, I pretty much just leave them alone. I let them stay on the plant. 
even though they might chomp on some of the milkweed or even eat some of the seed pods, still, those animals are still serving a purpose. Their coloration helps to advertise and helps to educate to the predators that are out there, some of which would dine on the monarchs, that that coloration tastes bad. They are worth having still on your milkweed, in my opinion. Still, though, let's be honest. Compared to a milkweed beetle, a clutch of these eggs is going to devastate a milkweed plant. These guys eat and consume milkweed. They go through milkweed like trains go through tunnels. Maybe it just seems more like that because there's so many more on one plant, but still, they can totally ruin a milkweed plant no problem. So why wouldn't I just dispose of them? Some people consider this to be definitely a pest to the milkweed plant. But if I could, let me give you something to consider. To those who don't really understand the plight of the monarch butterfly, milkweed is probably still a weed. It's something that they might pull out of their garden, something that they don't want in their yards, something they're worried is going to take over. To us monarch raisers, a milkweed plant is a beautiful thing to have in our yard. We cherish it. Now consider the tussock moth and how this analogy relates. Sure, some are going to consider the caterpillars on their milkweed a pest. And while it's true that the tussock moth can lay eggs on other members of the dogbane family besides milkweed, still, since one of its major diets and one of its major options is the milkweed plant, and that's declining, couldn't it serve to reason that perhaps this species might be suffering a little bit too from that same decline? Now, I'll be honest with you, and I'll admit, I tried to find anything I could on tussock moth conservation. Is this animal suffering like the monarch is? And I couldn't find anything. Nothing about population decline, nothing out there about a concern for the tussock moth. In fact, I did find some sources that said the population is stable. However, when it comes to the monarch butterfly, we have something convenient going on down in Mexico where we get to count how much area it's taking up and we can estimate what the population size is because of that. In other words, it can be very easy for us to notice if the monarch butterfly population is declining. Do we have any such convenience when it comes to keeping track of the tussock moth? And so while maybe nobody's expressing any concern over this animal yet, could it be that we're just not noticing it because it's not something we can conveniently keep track of? Start to rain. <laughs> so maybe they are doing fine. I don't really know. But it stands to reason that the milkweed is declining, that these guys are taking somewhat of a hit, even if they haven't reached a threatening critical level. And when you think about it, wasn't there a period of time when the monarch's population was declining and we didn't really know that yet because we hadn't really been studying it? Now, I'm not trying to be an alarmist and say that the tussock moth is also suffering and its population is declining. I have no reason to believe that, no reason to conclude that. But I do think that us as humans, we tend to favor certain animals that we think are beautiful. You've probably heard of us wanting to save the panda or save the polar bear. Have you ever heard about saving the purple frog? Hey, that's a critically endangered species too. Yet, it doesn't get nearly as much attention because it's not cute and fuzzy. When it comes to the tussock moth, and again, I'm not saying it's endangered or even threatened. Still, it's something that's not going to get as much attention as the monarch butterfly. There's no raising tussock moth series that I was able to find. We tend to want to help out the animals that we know and care about. And the monarch butterfly is iconic. But the tussock moth? I bet there's some people watching this video that didn't even know the tussock moth existed. But when there's certain animals that really need milkweed, and even though dogbane is an option, still, the tussock moth is one of them. Milkweed is its primary source of food. Don't they deserve to have their meal too? Should the monarch butterfly really have a monopoly on us planting milkweed just for that animal? What about these other ones that need milkweed too? Who speaks for the tussock moth? And again, you know, I think it's a pretty cool animal when you actually know a few things about it. So I thought I'd show off these guys because they're pretty cool and maybe give you some food for thought. Something to consider. Not everything that's on your milkweed, even if it is eating milkweed, maybe is considered a pest. Maybe it's also just another animal, similar to the monarch, trying to survive. Milkweed bugs, milkweed beetles, tussock moths, I like to let them just be. Now aphids, I'll totally squash some aphids. Those things could be on other plants and they're not touching my milkweed. And I understand maybe if you find some of these guys on your home milkweed plants, you don't really want them to devour it. I get it. But maybe the next time you find them out there in nature, or maybe even on your home plants, Give them some consideration. 
They are, after all, tussock moths, just trying to be the best tussock moths that they can be. And in my opinion, if you spend some time with them, they are pretty cute. Alright, we're going to let these guys go. I'm Rich Lund, thanks for checking out this video, and I will see you next time.